This first method is going to be a head first method. We're going to show you two different methods for the head first. Where we're going to go up, sink it under the shoulder strap, and click it right onto itself. When initiating this under survival stress, we need to make sure that our motions are very easy and replicatable under a stressful environment. As we approach the casualty, typically you'll have another team element with you. As we move in, we're able to sling that weapon, whoever's doing hands first. The first technique we're going to show you is sliding this through the shoulder strap and clicking it right onto itself. What we want to be able to utilize when doing this is things that we can perform under survival stress. Being able to click a carabiner onto itself is something that we can do after we lose fine motor skills or complex motor skills. At this point, if it's by myself, I will now stand back up, straight up, lean back, allowing my weight to help start to move this patient, bring my weapon system up, and start to extract this patient straight back. If I had an element member with me, I would be able to hand off one handle to them and we could do a two-person extraction, both while maintaining engagement on the threat. We're using our large muscles right now, so I'm leaning back using my lats, using my quads to lean back into it, using my whole leverage of my body to gain momentum with the casualty. The next head first rescue we're going to do is with a pre-staged uh, carabiner. What we've done, just like the carabiner that's on my shoulder, is taken an NFPA rated carabiner and tied that over the shoulder of the uh, shell and the soft body armor uh, with 550 cord. We've secured it there. What that creates for us on the left shoulder is a contact point or attachment point that we can get to in low light conditions, no light conditions very rapidly and improve our time off the X. Getting off that X or at the point of wounding is the most critical for us at this stage. That is where we want to spend the least amount of time because that's when we're at the greatest risk as a rescuer during this extraction. To do this, if I would just attach this carabiner onto his carabiner on his vest and pull him, there'd be a great distance between us. On a surface like this, it wouldn't make much of a difference, but if I'm on sand, dirt, or grass, I'm going to need to leverage some of his upper body off that ground to decrease his body surface friction to make that extraction and that drag for me a lot quicker. How we do that is we take the carabiner that's already with the uh, dragon handle system and we feed that through these two loops prior to doing the extraction. So when you see these two loops right under the handle, we feed the carabiner through both of these loops. And what we've just done is created a shortened webbing system. So instead of the full length right now, this is what we're dealing with. That carabiner snaps right into that carabiner. When I lift up, it's going to lift his head and shoulder slightly off the ground, decreasing the friction and allow me to move very easily. This rescue can also be done one person or two person. So just as the prior extraction went, we were able to go in with our partner, being able to engage the threat, moving up to our casualty. As soon as the casualty is met, rescuer will sling his weapon. At this point, the contact is made carabiner to carabiner. I can now give my other handle to my other rescuer, or if I'm doing it by myself, I will raise my weapon system back up. I will stand over this patient, squat his weight up, lifting him off the ground, lean back into it, and able to use my large muscles to extract him straight back. If we encounter our casualty, lying in the direction where we're going to do a feet first extraction there's a couple methods in which we can do that one we can pre-rig that dragon system to go through the bull ring and click on at that point these this loop would go over the uh, casualties feet when we pull it would cinch on creating a girth hitch of sort and tighten up that is not needed we can actually just wrap this underneath their feet and click it back onto the webbing itself when we pull tension on it, it will lock around their ankles and their feet to allow us to extract them. This can be done with one or two people. We're doing a one person system right now and we'll show you that in slow motion. As I approach myself, I am able to engage the threat. I'll sling my weapon when I reach the casualty. At this point, this distal end with the carabiner is run underneath their legs and it is now snapped back onto itself. If I had a second rescuer, I could hand that handle off to them now. Otherwise, by myself, I will squat that victim's weight straight up. His legs will create about a 20 to 30 degree angle, in which that will decrease the body surface friction when I start to drag him. I will lean back, engage the threat, just as I did previously. As soon as I get that momentum, I'll keep it going using my large muscles, being able to 
extract the casualty. The last one we'll show you is a field expedient way of utilizing the Dragon Handle System uh, with a hands-free option, similar to what the rat strap is. This is not always recommended, but can be pulled out in a jam. The reason is, is when we connect this to our CQB belt or to our harness, as we are right now, once I connect onto my casualty and I'm extracting, I have no way of quick releasing out if I get engaged. That's why the rat strap is probably more optimal in this situation. But if we don't have anything else, this can do the same job as the rat strap performing a hands-free extraction. As we approach single victim, uh, we will approach the casualty down, being able to engage the threat. When I reach my casualty, I will sling my weapon, have my partner putting cover fire down. I will throw each handle over his feet. As soon as that second one is stationed in there, I'm actually free to go. I will now stand up. Right here, I'm completely hands free. What I do is I put my weight down like I'm going to repel. I lean back and I let my weight carry the casualty backwards, utilizing a hands free option. This will be a quick demonstration of how we can utilize two rescuers to do a, use the drag and handle system. We're going to execute this on a feet first drag. You can use this head first or feet first. When we approach the casualty, we will both be able to engage the threat. Moving in, rescuer one will sling his weapon. Rescuer two maintains engagement with threat. I click it right back onto itself on the webbing. At that point, his hand's out. I put the handle in his hand. I bring my weapon system up. We both extract back. Now we'll stop here. If at any time we have overwatch in front of us uh, and we do not have to engage uh, with the threat, we can both turn around very rapidly and full sprint with them. One valid point that is brought up uh, since the 1998 meeting of the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care when they published a paper on October 25th of 1999 showed an issue with when retrieving a uh, casualty, what are we going to do with that casualty's weapon? The last thing we want to do is add something more onto us. When we're utilizing the rat strap or the dragon handle system, one option that we always have is with this floating bull ring or on one of the loops. We can always take that uh, casualty's uh, weapon, loop that sling, loop it right into the floating bull ring or onto one of the loops that is already on the rat strap. That way we're removing the casualty and we're removing the casualty's weapon, not leaving it behind for any hostile combatants to utilize. Lastly, closing with the dragon handle system, we should never put a piece of kit on us that only has one use like extraction. We should be able to utilize this for multiple reasons. Uh, one option because of its construction with tech tape and the stitching, we can clip this around an anchor point and utilize it as an anchor for our whole team to repel off of. We can use it as a tagline. You can also utilize this on casualties who do not have body armor like civilians and be able to thread this over their chest, around their back and secure their torso by cinching it in uh, where we don't normally have attachment points. Those are basically the core components of the Dragon Handle System.